I've seen the rotation. I've seen the break. It's such an overpowering feeling to be eyeball to eyeball with a killer like that. It's coming over the campus buildings. You could feel the power of this monster. And when it came dangerously close, I ducked back into the stairwell and just started to pray. Are you kidding me? Nobody should be out there. You had two really important facilities close to the tornado path. One was DCH Regional Medical Center. That would be the ultimate disaster if a tornado took out that hospital. Our nurse manager stuck her head in the door and said for us to take cover because the news had reported that there had been a tornado spotted it on 15th Street coming straight for the hospital. We have this child who's intubated, so we quickly decided that the other nurse would lie over her head and that I would lie over her body on the stretcher and hang on. At this point, we're unaware of how big this tornado was. And then all of a sudden, there was this huge black cloud just swirling and I screamed oh my gosh there it is it came so quickly and it was just so huge and it was so close it was almost like you could reach out and just touch it it was there and then it was gone and the sky was clear again Looks like the tornado is beyond the range of the Tuscaloosa Sky Camp, so it's moving away from the city. But again, I would say for about the next maybe 15 minutes, I would stay sheltered until we could come out and assess the damage. Oh my God, God, Look at that right underneath the public eyes. Look over there. Probably the biggest obstacle was all the debris. There were whole trees down the road and two by fours and signs. At that point, I think everything kind of became surreal. I can't even recognize this place. I've driven on the cars. We can't get there. The area we pulled up to, it was about a block and a half away from where I work and had been just a couple hours before. And it looked like an absolute war zone. There was nothing left except for a few power poles that were broken off. Um, houses were completely laid out over 30 or 40 feet, but there was nothing structurally left of them. Get in, get in. Come on. screaming for help. I think that's when we got out and we started trying to help. I was getting updates about two communication towers being destroyed. About 80% of the city's heavy equipment was destroyed. 911 being gone. And a fire station being destroyed. You would have entire houses that were blown off the foundation. You could see trees stripped of their bark. Most of the trees, in many cases, were just completely uprooted and tossed somewhere else. Cars 
tossed around like toys, crumpled up into balls like a piece of paper. A lot of people describe it like a bomb went off, only over a long swath. Trees are blocking roads. There's no information. Cell service is dismantled. To see what that beast did to this city was unbelievable. I saw people just emerging. People with cuts, bleeding, impaled objects. They looked to me almost like zombies. I kind of describe it as an unraveling nightmare because we saw the landscape totally changed. It was unrecognizable. I was never really concerned about where I lived because I hadn't heard anything about Alberta or my apartment. Isaiah, tell us where you are and what you got. James, I'm on 13th Street. I'm standing right here in the parking lot. Those businesses are no more. They have been completely leveled. It's a complete disaster here, James. There was a Shell gas station uh, on the corner of 13th and McFarland. And everything inside of that gas station had been gutted by the storm, um, except for the counter. And I remember walking up to a lady, she was still holding on to the counter and she was crying. She says, I wrote this storm holding on to this counter. And I'm not letting this go until somebody tells me for sure that thing is gone. And I said, man, the storm's moved on. And during that interview, she let go. I'm just hoping the neighbors are all right, man. I know they had all those kids over there. You're worried about some of the things that you have, but then that very quickly dissipates and you get to being where you need to go and check on everyone else around you. Come on, come on. Tuscaloosa is not a very big town, and we all kind of know each other a little bit around here, especially our neighbors. You okay? Hey, I, I need to get over here. We need to go check on these folks. Josh, look out, power on. It's a sketchy situation when you're dealing with high electricity in a disaster area. They're down now, but they might come back up. That's what I'm saying. But we got to get over here. We have to go check on these people. Hey, are y'all okay? There's trees all up and down here, so I don't know. The neighbors to my left. They had a couple of trees leaned over on the side of their house, and you know I was worried. Children were crying. It was a very stressful situation. You all right? 